footprint very quickly. And if you haven't done the exercise on the carbon footprint um, by going on a website uh, that has a carbon footprint calculator, please do. It is quite interesting. But what I have found with these carbon footprint calculators is that we tend to, as South Africans, not have such a big carbon footprint as um, the world average. And especially um, if you compare it to America's average, we're quite below that. Not to say that we do not contrib contribute, because we do, um, especially in the sense that the electricity that we use, uses, um, is mostly produced by burning uh, coal, which produces a lot of carbon dioxide. Also, um, our way of driving that we do, um, and the type of cars that we drive, we tend to add a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which increases our carbon footprint. Now, with greenhouse gases increasing due to man's activities, uh, there was an intergovernmental panel on climate change that was formed uh, to assess the risk of global warming. Now, this was formed in 1998. And based on their findings, governments have been trying to come up on an agreement to on how to limit uh, greenhouse gas and gases emission as a um, as a world, as a as a population of the world. And so there's various conferences and discussions that have been happening. One of the most important ones was the Kyo in Kyoto, where they came up with the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, which is which most countries signed around the world um, and agreed on on how ways and methods of how they're going to reduce their carbon emissions. But there was a few other ones as well. Uh, after that, there was the one in Copenhagen, which is of course in Germany, and Cancun, and then a few years ago there was one in Durban as well. The biggest problem with the discussions is that different cannot, uh, the different countries cannot agree um, on what the standard should be. Um, and also, um, they try to use a variable standard. Uh, for developed countries, they give one standard, and for developing countries, they, they give another standard to help developing countries to, um, to economically grow before they actually have to contribute which may not be the right solution. Uh, we should try and get um, sustainable practices from the start while we are still growing our economies. Okay, so um, as a result, these discussions, however, there's a measure um, of the carbon footprint has been established, um, however. And so there are some steps that have been taken. Okay, so. A carbon footprint is a measure of the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions, mainly carbon dioxide, caused by a country or an organization or a person in one year. It is expressed in terms of the amount of carbon dioxide produced per year. And the primary footprint measures direct emissions. I get into a car, I drive the car, or I'm driving in the car and that produces carbon dioxide. So that's direct. I switch on the light. I'm a direct cause of it. Uh, if you take a look at secondary, um, secondary ones, these are things like I am buying a product and to produce that product, it would have uh, produced carbon dioxide and that will be secondary emissions. Yes, Ruan, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. And with carbon footprint, it, it says it's a measure of the total greenhouse gases produced by um, yes. a country or, or organization or person. But so isn't, I mean, if, it's, if you're looking at the measure of total greenhouse gases, shouldn't you also include like things like methane and yes. all the other so gases? It should actually uh, include methane, it should actually include CFCs. But if you take a look at most of these greenhouse gases, you'll find, except for example, uh, nitrous oxide. Uh, the rest are all containing carbon. Uh, but um, normally, if you take a look at the calculators, they mainly talk about carbon dioxide. 
It is just that in proportion wise, carbon dioxide is so much more than the rest. Um, methane, for example, methane as a molecule traps more heat than um, as a greenhouse gas, than carbon dioxide, I think it's a hundred times, I stand correct, but it traps a hundred times more heat than carbon dioxide, but it's produced in such small amounts compared to carbon dioxide that we kind of neglect the rest when, when working out uh, our carbon footprints. Okay. But you see, one of the uh, things that you would have um, done in, in the carbon footprint calculator is they would ask you, for example, how much food, are, um, and it, it has to do with secondary, your secondary production. How much food or money on food are you spending per month? And by using that, they actually then calculate, okay, um, they calculate methane emissions through that because a lot of the meat, they would ask you, how much meat do you eat? And meat production or the production of cattle, uh, cattle farming produces a lot of methane. And so that's why they include those factors as well. But it tends to be minuscule in terms of um, if you compare it to carbon dioxide. Okay. So yes, primary sir. footprint measures our direct emissions. Um, our heating of the home, our cooking, our use of transport as a car, uh, using electricity, and most individuals have direct control over their primary footprint and can reduce it by making just wise lifestyle choices. Uh, switching off a light when you walk out of a room. Uh, if you can walk somewhere, then walk somewhere instead of driving, for example. Secondary footprint has to do with the indirect carbon emissions. So things that I buy that um, in the production of those things would have produced a lot of carbon dioxide. Okay, so um, building materials, food that we eat, um, those are all contributors because they also have then uh, to produce them, produce carbon dioxide. But there's also offsets. What we're talking about when we're talking about offsets is um, if I plant a tree, I reduce my carbon emissions. I take some of that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. I've got a lot of, for example, in our home, um, uh, I've got a lot of elephant shrub, um, or uh, as it called, uh, it's also called, I'm trying to think of the more common name that they use, it's an Afrikaans name. But anyway, it's, it's a great photosynthesizer. And it a, a spapworm. Spapworm is the Afrikaans name. Um, and it reduce it's 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 such a good photosynthesizer that it, it it actually contributes so much about taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Also, if I use energy efficient devices like energy saving light bulbs, LED light bulbs instead of the old incandescent flu uh, or fluorescent light bulb, then that reduces my carbon emissions as well. Also, if I recycle, it reduces carbon emissions. Okay, so uh, in South Africa, we, I'm gonna answer your questions now. We're on the last page of this, specific, um, of this specific section. So we have a carbon emissions tax um, in South Africa. So if you buy a new car, uh, you actually pay part of the money that you pay for that car, actually pays a tax that has to do with, uh, that compensates for the carbon dioxide that you produce or that you will um, produce in the lifetime of that car. And so uh, you would find something like a sticker on this, on the, on the new car that says, okay, it uses 6.8 liters per 100 kilometers. It produces 159 grams of um, carbon dioxide per kilometer that you drive. And so there is actually an amount attached to that and you pay tax on that. Okay, so before I get to deforestation, um, I see two of you uh, raise your hands. Can, uh, let's go through questions on the carbon footprint. Any questions, guys? Yes, sir. So, um, I, I saw you talk about like um, photos synthesizing. 
that even if the tree photosynthesis, we can take up the arm of light at the same rate as it takes up the carbon dioxide. And I don't think it, it can also take up like the water, the water level at the rate at which it takes up the, the carbon dioxide. So aren't, aren't all trees the same in terms of um, carbon, carbon, when they take up the carbon dioxide? Okay. Um, if I'm hearing your question correctly, and I hope I am, the internet connection is not that good. Uh, you broke up a little bit, but no, not all plants are as effective at photosynthesizing as, um, as some other plants. Uh, the spectrum is extremely effective at photosynthesizing, except for that it is a zero fight and um, it actually uses very little water. Um, it's very well adapted to the South African climate. Um, it is indigenous as well. So, and it's such a good photosynthesizer that, uh, that it uses very little water, um, but, but, of, um, uh, but uses the same, uh, but takes out a lot of carbon dioxide, produces a lot of oxygen from that. Now, where does that come in? Because the basic processes of photosynthesizers, uh, some photosynthesis is normally the same, but, but during the photosynthesis process, I use some of the energy that I'm producing in photosynthesis to actually drive the process. And that's where some plants are better than other plants at, um, at photosynthesis, is that they use less energy and less water to, to trap the same amount of carbon dioxide and convert it back into sugars and into um, oxygen. Okay, there was I like, a, I'm another on. hand raised. Yes, sir. Yes, Joan. Uh, so, you know, with, with, with spec worms, you said they're indigenous to South Africa. Uh, yes. But if we if we start making like um, spec worm, uh, are they succulent plants or? They're succulent. You, you know what, guys? I'm gonna walk to. I'm just gonna walk to the front of my garden, and I'm gonna show you one. Uh, let me just switch on my camera, okay? And I'm gonna stop my share. Um, okay. Okay, this is probably not, not the most effective camera to use to show this, but I'm, I'm going to show it to you. They, um, okay, so, it is, that's a spec wood. And I'm going to take a, 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 it actually makes very nice, um, you can take a piece of plant like this, and you leave it out. This is quite weird in terms of propagating plants. You actually leave it out um, of water for about two days. And after you left it out of the water for about two days, uh, then you plant it and you give it water after that. And um, it actually will start growing roots again without much trouble. Uh, so, um, I'm going to show you why I say it's a zero fight. It is a suck. It is kind of a succulent, not completely, but you can see the leaves are quite fleshy. I'll take one off here and show that to the camera. And if I squeeze it out, you can see it stores a, yes, a lot of water inside of its leaves. And so yes, it is a succulent because it does store water in its leaves, but it doesn't store that much water inside its stem. And so there you go, that is a spec worm. Uh, sir, um, can you plant yes. it in like grassland area? You can. Or can you uh, plant it, it in grass? Um, it will actually grow there. It's not probably the best environment for it, um, but you, um, you can, you can it, it doesn't, because it doesn't take up much water, it's not going to take much water from the uh, surrounding gr grassland, which is a good thing. 
And so by planting too much, is it going to affect the ecosystem? Yes, unfortunately, um, anything that's too much is not a good thing. Okay, so uh, just remember that as well. Um, so try and um, it's a good plant to plant in your garden. It, it won't take over in, uh, in South African conditions because it's got a lot of natural enemies. In the, uh, that will keep its numbers under control. Uh, but it's a very good thing to plant in your ga gar garden rather than, for example, roses or rather than um, some uh, any of the alien or non-endemic plants uh, in South Africa that we find in South Africa. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a better option. It's always a better option for a South African garden. Okay, let's get into deforestation very quickly. Um, so, deforestation. I'm not going to go through the content in details. It basically summarizes the 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 whole um, the whole lesson from the start. So, plot play a very important part and when I say plants and specifically trees and then when I say trees uh, in this section we're specifically talking about trees that are in forests. They play an essential role in the carbon cycle and controlling carbon dioxide levels as we already talked about but also in the water cycle um, as storage areas for water. Uh, that keeps water into the um, into or uh, closer to the ground for much longer. Um, uh, part of that is transpiration, the process, and then also what I need to remember that if we take a look at an, air, at an area like here, we've got to remember that the roots are going to go down very far into the ground here, and that that's going to have a very positive effect on um, keeping soil in place and then minimizing erosion. Okay, so why, why are forests important? Uh, it controls erosion because of the roots going into the ground. It keeps the soil together. Uh, also for us, it produces timber, which is a fuel, but we can also build from that. It's habitat, it's a habitat for plants and animals. It's a source of food for us, especially if we think about things like, like fruit trees, but also for other animals, it's a food source. It produces a lot of oxygen and takes out and cleans the air by taking out carbon dioxide. Okay, so uh, forests have formed over millions of years to develop and cover about 21% of the Earth's, sorry, this is a bit wrong, land surface, not uh, 21 percent of the earth's land surface. The first they take up so, uh, takes a so long to grow once cut down. They are very vulnerable to man's interference and forests are important for maintaining carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the atmosphere. They help reduce evaporation from soil because of the roots and they anchor, um, they anchor the, the, the soil together and they provide a home for many plants and animals. They can provide people with shelter, with medicines for us, um, and employment if we manage it sustainably, which is very difficult to do in terms of trees because we humans tend to think uh, most of the time very short term. Uh, we don't think of the long term effects. So when, when I'm a forester and I'm planting, I'm planting trees, I need to think that it's not going to be for the advantage of me. It's going to be for the advantage of the generations coming after me. Trees are part of the carbon sink and they store carbon in their biomass um, and they absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, thus producing the greenhouse effect. Okay, another horrifying picture there of deforestation. Uh, so what is deforestation? It's a permanent clearing of forests. Um, sometimes it happens with natural means like natural fires uh, that start with lightning, for example, 
but a lot of these forests are caused, deforestation is caused by man's activities. Why? Because we need places to farm, plant crops and, grow, um, and cattle to graze. We use the wood for cooking and heating. Um, some of it we use for building materials and furniture. And we also build mines, factories, roads and houses in places where there should be forests. Damage to the environment as a result of deforestation can include the change in the carbon cycle and oxygen balance in the atmosphere. Um, and so the number of carbon that's supposed to be taken out of the atmosphere is not in balance. If, uh, other effects of deforestation affects the water cycle. I love this picture because it, uh, of the shape of the lungs here. It, um, we say that the forests are like the lungs of the uh, earth. They help keep um, our oxygen and our air clear. Um, now, just, just for interest sake, if we take a look at most of the photosynthesis on earth, and most of the carbon dioxide being absorbed on Earth, and most of the oxygen being put into Earth, uh, into the atmosphere. It actually happens in the oceans, not on land. But because our impact on the forests are so huge, we, we feel the impact. Um, it does take out a lot of the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and turns it back into oxygen. Also, um, we can see over here erosion happening. So if the, if the forests are taken out, then the roots on there to keep the soil together and we find erosion happening. Also, there's reduction in biodiversity. Now, in terms of biodiversity, I always uh, like the analogy that they use of the pop rivet effect. If you have a plane, uh, let me, I'm going to draw this as well. Uh, let me just add a page. There we go. And just change the page to a. Okay. So, if you have a plane, and again, please don't laugh at my drawings. I'm not an artist. Okay. So, there's a plane. And the plane is uh, basically consisting out of metal sheets that is held together by many, many pop rivets in certain cases. Okay, so in this plane on, on certain panels where the panels come together, we hold it together with some pop rivets. And it's everywhere on the plane. Okay. Okay, now, if, if one of those pop rivets go, get an eraser, if one goes, that one disappears. No problem. Okay. It's one pop rivet. What is one pop rivet? There's thousands of them. But then there's another one, and another one, and another one. And this is biodiversity. If one species disappears, it's not an issue. But they have got a problem. Now, my, my wing's going to come off. Because all the pop rivets holding the wings to the plane have are now taken up. And that's the same with biodiversity. If we, if we take a one more and one more and one more species dies, in the end, we're going to lose so many species that, um, that it's going to have a very detrimental effect on the whole system. Okay. Now, go to the next page. So what are the solutions to deforestation? Um, in South Africa, we need to monitor our forests. So we don't have many forests in South Africa. So it's essential for us to make sure that we take care of them. Um, people, the forested areas may be protected in natural areas and that permits and licenses and uh, gives licenses for the necessary removal of certain trees. And that woodlots and nurseries can be established for producing a production of trees for firewood and for producing medicinal plants. So what's happening a lot of times, especially in a South African context, is a lot of these forests contain medicinal plants. And um, if too many people are taking um, some of these plants out of the forest, we're gonna lose some of that biodiversity. 
So rather than taking it out of the forest, rather let's plant some of it. Let's farm with it to increase the biodiversity. Okay, that is that is in deforestation. Um, that went a lot quicker than yesterday, a lot quicker than I thought. Um, but there you go. There's activity three, four, and five. Sorry, I see I made a little bit of a, a type in blue. I, I deleted something there. It's activity three, four, and five. It starts on page 284, ends on page 286 of the focus book. Um, and that's going to be your homework. I've also placed some more videos on deforestation for you guys onto the Google Classroom to go and watch. Are there any questions with regards to deforestation? So what what would be the, the impact of planting the speg boom everywhere? Okay, so not a bad idea, um, but be careful of everywhere. There are places that um, remember that if I plant one tree too much, then I, I have an impact of the, um, on the biodiversity of the rest of that area. Um, so anywhere in South Africa, no problem. Um, in abundance over, over any other plant, no. You've got to keep a balance there. You've got, there's got to be a balance always. Um, you, you can't take out other plants that are supposed to be there to plant the spectrum to give space for the spectrum. But it's not a bad idea. The more we can plant of it, the better. And there's various campaigns on especially the spectrum to plant more spectrum, to keep it as a house plant, to plant it in your garden. Um, and so, yes, it's not a bad idea, but always uh, moderation in a certain sense. Be careful. Uh, we always have to maintain, try and maintain the biodiversity as well. But if you're going to take out an alien plant out of your garden to plant a spectrum boom, any time. Any more questions, guys? I'm just checking the chat as well. There's nothing in the chat at the moment. Okay, so guys, get to the homework and go watch the additional videos, please. Thank you very much. I will see you guys on Monday again, and then we'll mark all five activities of this chapter before we continue. Oh yes, one more thing before I forget. Um, I actually, um, I haven't published yesterday's lesson as yet, but I will, I just need to do a bit of editing on it. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.